Our next speaker is a very big deal. He is the president and chief executive officer of the Realogy Franchise Group. He is responsible for managing a portfolio of leading real estate franchise brands, including Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate, Century 21, Caldwell Banker, Caldwell Banker Commercial, ERA, and Sotheby's International Realty, which combined have over 15,000 franchise offices and approximately 294,000 brokers and independent sales associates doing businesses in 115 countries and territories worldwide. In 2018, he was named for the second consecutive year to the Swan Poll 200, an annual list of the most powerful people in real estate. Girl, he made the Swan Poll 200. <laughs> I'm turned on already. Uh, the minute I hear Swan Poll. Uh, Prior to his role at Realogy Franchise Group, he served for 17 years as a senior executive with Starwood Hotels and Resorts Worldwide Incorporated. He is a recognized global branding leader who brings deep experience leading large complex organizations and maximizing scale while enabling innovation and flexibility. Please welcome to the stage, John Payton. Here. You are so funny. Thank you, um, So this is my first time at, at Nagel Rep, and I've only been in the industry for, for two years. And I've, I've, worked for, I've worked for large public companies for 30 years, and uh, I've been to a lot of conferences, and as you can imagine, have like had media training and speaking training drilled into me. I have never, ever... There's so many things that are so amazing about this conference, but the cursing is so cool. <laughs> so, where's the camera? This is so fucking cool. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> As for you, Craig Hogan, I learned that from you on the bus. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I came from Starwood. I was there at, for almost 20 years. Um, I'm here at Realogy because Marriott bought Starwood. I was the chief marketing officer at Starwood, and Marriott had a chief marketing officer, so here I am at Realogy. And if you know Starwood, it was Sheraton, Weston, St. Regis, W Hotels, and it was an awful lot about brand building and telling a message like we just heard. And, and that's what I want to talk about today is the importance of brand building in, in our space and what Realogy sees in the future and why we're so bullish about real estate and, more importantly, the role of the agent in the, in the future. Um, and so I've only been here about two years, and as I, as I talk to our affiliates across the country um, and at conferences like this, one of the things I hear over and over again is, is change and how much the industry is changing, whether it's technology or all of the private equity that's going into the industry, new products, new, new brands, and that this pace of change is introducing uncertainty, a little bit of fear, I guess, but I think change also brings opportunity. And our world right now is changing literally at an unprecedented pace. It's never changed faster. And I think as, as leaders, we have to look at, if we look at just the headlines that are out there right now, we might conclude that the economy is about to fail or that you know, eight more years of prosperity are here. We might conclude that um, uh, we're going to war with North Korea or we're suddenly um, in love with the leader of North Korea. Uh, <laughs> and so on. And so I think it's important as, as um, leaders to focus on the trend line and not the headline and not to get lost in what's happening from day to day. So if you take a look at just demographics, for example, demographic trends, we're living in an age of great change, an age of rapid change that many are arguing we haven't seen since the Industrial Revolution. Um, some interesting stacks. It took from the beginning of time zero, until 1804 for the world to reach a billion people. It only took 123 more years to get to two billion people, 60 years to double again to four billion, and in only 40 years, 
we'll have 8 billion people on the, on the planet. During that same period, just between 1990 and 2015, importantly, the middle class grew and doubled by 2 billion during that same time period. So we're living in an era of crazy, crazy change. Urbanization, which is so important to what we do, is equally dynamic. Two centuries ago, when this country was founded, 95% of the world's population lived in a village or a farm. By 2007, for the first time ever, more people lived in cities than anywhere else in, in the world. And over the next 40 years, more people will move to a city than currently live in them today. That translates to 5 million people, new urban residents, every single month. The equivalent of the population of Singapore or Denmark, my home state of Connecticut. It's crazy, unpre unprecedented growth. Why this migration to cities? Um, why the explosion of the middle class? Income for city dwellers is four times that of their rural counterparts. Movement and commerce are all enabled by technology, as we know. And so the speed of change is truly mind-boggling. And I think probably the greatest, did you hear my voice crack there? It's like I was a 13-year-old bar mitzvah boy. Um, <clears throat> is probably the greatest, the greatest business you know, challenge of our time, is dealing with the change that we are, we are dealing with. And so I think for all of you, it makes running a business today super tricky because it's hard not to be rocked by the latest headline. And our nature is to react as humans to whatever we hear, sell stock on bad news, cut costs because we had a disappointing quarter. And the trick is to find that balance between you know, the ping pong of our heads going back and forth between the latest headline um, and the news that's breaking. And so I think my job as a leader at Realogy, your jobs leading your companies and your business or your teams is to really make the best judgment you can for your organization, for your team, for your clients, and for your business in sorting through all this out. So change, talk a little bit more about change, is no longer linear, right? We are changing in so many ways um, exponentially. And this concept of exponential growth is really hard for humans to digest, because our brains can't do math that fast. Uh, but I'll give you an example that I think helps understand this idea of exponential change and the rate of growth we have today. Can you think of anything you can do to a piece of paper to get to the moon? Wow. Um, you could fold it. So if you fold a piece of paper one time, it's about you know, less than an inch thick, obviously. If you fold a piece of paper 17 times, it's the height of a person. If you, height, if you fold it 25 times, it's the height of the Empire State Building. 40 folds a satellite in orbit, 6,832 miles high. And 45 folds of a piece of paper, you'll reach the moon. That's exponential growth, and that's how fast our world is changing today. So just think about technology, right, and how it's affected us. When I graduated from college in 19... 89, um, I had all of these things in my, in my, in my to, to deal with, right? I had books, encyclopedias, phones, um, my computer, cameras, my date book, my calculator, all of that to ha handle my life. Today, like all of us, all of that has disappeared into my phone. And today, phones have more computing power, your phone in your pocket right now, has more computing power than the entire Nixon White House had in 1971. <laughs> Imagine if he had more power then than he does now, right? Okay, so that's a good, good point. Uh, um, here's another example of exponential growth and how quickly the world is changing. It took 110 years for the telephone to reach 1 billion users, 110 years. It took 49 years, half of that, for TV to reach a billion users. Eight years for Facebook and smartphones to reach a billion years, users. And WeChat, the Facebook of China, billion users in under four years. Right? We've never seen a world changing as fast as that. So at Realogy, you know, we're proud of our brands. We, we have Caldwell Bank, and they're all here. Caldwell Banker, Sotheby's, Better Homes and Gardens, ERA, Century 21, Corcoran. Um, all really strong brands. And in this age of great change, when things are changing so quickly, 
the importance of brand, and we've heard so much about that already this morning, is more important than ever. And so I want to talk a little bit about why branding, whether it's your personal brand or the, if you're part of a larger um, national brand, is so important. Um, I think about brands having sort of really clear core values, and that probably changes by category, right? So if you're in the apparel business, for example, it's really important to have status around affiliation and self-expression and how you make people feel when you're, when you're wearing their clothes. Nike recently, right, with its Colin Kaepernick campaign, Nike took what was perceived to be a risk and has had the largest reaction ever in any campaign that it's ever run. Cars, you know, the core values for cars are about attitude and prestige and safety. Uh, the core values for restaurants and location brands are about the experience, the ritual, and the community. But despite the category, I think the most successful brands, and this is what I think is relevant to all of you as realtors and how you think about your own personal brand, is every strong brand shares three core benefits. You know, a brand's got a functional benefit, a emotional benefit, and a societal benefit. And if you have all three, you're a really strong brand. So take Starbucks as an example. Functional benefit from Starbucks is the jolt you get from the caffeine in the, in the cup of coffee. The emotional benefit is Starwood describes its stores as the third place, right? Where you where you'd go in, free Wi-Fi, great music, the aroma, it's a coffee house, and you're invited to stay as long as you want with people who are enjoying coffee as same as you. And they have a societal benefit. All of Starbucks beans are sourced from sustainable farms. And so I think as I think about our business, we also have four these same benefits that I think are really important to keep in mind. We have a functional benefit. We help people buy or sell a house. But we also have the emotional benefit and connection, which is, in addition to that, you are um, uh, therapists, mediators, marriage counselors, financial experts. And we have a societal benefit, because we are not just buying and selling houses. We're helping people create homes and have roots in a community. And I don't think there's anything more important than that. So the bottom line in branding today is that you know, a trust mark has really become, a, has, a trademark is more important, sorry, a trust mark is more important than a trademark. Um, and I think that what you all do and we all do in representing the buyers and sellers of homes, there's nothing more important than trust. And I think in this, in this industry, we work really hard to earn the trust of our customers. Um, and we do that by staying really current with the demands of the, of the market. Um, and I'll give you an example of that. Uh, take technology, for example. In my old company, I worked for Starwood Hotels, and um, you all know about Airbnb, right? So picture this. So the preeminent conference in the hotel business is the New York NYU real estate conference that gets a couple thousand people from around the world and the US um, talking about hotels and real estate development. And the big ticket item there at the general session is the five CEOs of then, Starwood, Hilton, Marriott, um, Hyatt, and IFG. So go back in time about eight years ago. You had the five CEOs of those companies who were five, 50, plus year old white guys, and they were asked back in 2009 or 10, what do you think of this new Airbnb thing? What do you think they said? It's not relevant, not our business, has nothing to do with us, not even, not even on our radar screen. Three years ago, when Airbnb had a market cap in excess of Marriott, was selling more room nights a night, a, a night in New York than Marriott, Hilton, and Starwood combined, those same five CEOs, now almost 60, were asked the same question. What did they say? Totally missed it. We didn't understand the change that was, we were confronting. We didn't understand the consumer insight that was driving it, right? which is that people, particularly after 9-11, People wanted to have a real authentic experience when they were traveling, whether for business or for leisure. And if they were in New York City, they didn't want to stay in the 2,000-room Sheraton in Times Square. They wanted to stay somewhere downtown where they could interact with real people. Travel agents were wiped out by technology. Right? If, you, if you remember all the way back to when Priceline got launched, the industry missed that too. 
and you have very few travel agents left. They just specialize in boutique. But that hasn't happened here. One of the things that I think is so impressive about our industry is that real estate agents successfully reinvented themselves when faced with Zillow, consumer empowerment, and the change technology landscape in our space. And we had to reinvent ourselves, right? We went from being information gatekeepers to becoming trusted advisors and experts. Because back then, before Zillow, um, we controlled access to the inventory, right? You had to come to a realtor just to find out what was for sale. But now our clients come to us already knowing what houses they want to see, um, uh, what the price they think they should pay. Sellers believe they already know what the right price is to list their house. Um, so everything has changed, and you all have reinvented yourself. And we at Realogy are super bullish about the future, despite some of the headlines today about will technology replace humans in the real estate transaction? Will different models put us out of business? We don't worry about any of that, and I'll, I'll tell you why. First thing is, there's a lot of money to be made in real estate. The, um, the total real estate commissions paid last year in the US, $70 billion was divided up among all of the real estate agents in the country. That number will grow to $85 billion in 2020. So when you have a market this large, um, we're very optimistic about the ability to stay in it and make some money. But despite all of the change that technology has brought to our industry, the most interesting thing is the value that consumers, the sellers of homes, place on our services hasn't changed in 20 years. So we make the average uh, commission rate in the US today is about 5.2, 5.3%, right? That number hasn't changed in 20 years. So despite new technology, despite um, private equity putting literally hundreds of million dollars into new startups, uh, and all of that, re uh, sellers of real estate still believe that working with a realtor is worth 5%. That's phenomenal. Here's another really encouraging stat about the future that we like. 15 years ago, 69% of buyers, 79% of sellers used an agent, 69 and 79. Today, 88% of buyers and sellers use an agent. It's actually increasing. <laughs> Boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, millennials, which cohort uses agents the most? Millennials. 92% of millennials either work with a real estate agent or intend to when they buy their first home. Incredibly encouraging. And best of all, there are 16 million millennial households at the moment. About a third of them own a house. In 20 years, there'll be 50 million millennial households that have formed, millennials that have formed homes. Two thirds of them will own a house. So the opportunity for future business is, is tremendous. We are very bullish about the trend line and we're not discouraged by the headline. So when we start to think about all that we've done to change as realtors, we also start to look at the demographics of the US. And that has been anything but static. It has changed a lot. Um, you know, 92% of the US population growth, I actually, we checked this stat last night because I was surprised by it and wanted to make sure we had it right. 92% of the growth in the last 15 years in the US has come from multicultural population. Asians, Hispanics, anybody but a non-Caucasian, which I think is incredible. And when you think about the size of the markets that we have to serve that are growing and joining the middle class, um, it's tremendous. Growth is also abundant in the LGBT community. Um, and interesting stats here. So this is the percentage of American adults um, who identify as LGBT. In, in 2012, it was 3.5%. 2016, it was 4.5%. And in only a year to 2017, four and a half percent. And so the question is, what's changed? The only thing that I think has changed is that society has become more accepting and that people are much more comfortable revealing their status in questions like this. And I think it's a great reflection of the progress we're making as a nation. The final number there is that um, we're up to 5.8% of millennials who identify as LGBT. Um, just in 2012, 2017, it's 8.1%. You know, I think that we're becoming much more welcoming as a society. So all these people, regardless of their demographics, are looking for the right neighborhood 
the right home, the right advisor, at the right price, the right agent, um, and that's huge for us in the, in the future. So wanted to talk a little bit about what we're doing at Realogy. Um, I am the executive sponsor of our Real Pride group. DJ John is, the, is the, our, our captain within the company. Um, Monty Smith, I think, is also here. Um, and we're doing a lot of work within Realogy to make sure that we are doing everything we can to reflect and support the needs of our LGBT employees, but also the owners of our 2,500 franchises across the country, our agents, um, and, and customers. We're doing a lot of work to get ready for all the events in, in New York next year. Um, and Realogy, as you heard from Tanya um, during her video, is a really big supporter of Nagelrep and has been from the beginning. Um, you saw uh, Jeff talked about the first ever top agent list that we did with, um, with Real Trends. Sotheby sponsored that. You're going to hear from Sotheby's CMO, Kevin Anthony's here as well at one of the breakouts tomorrow. Uh, we've got Caldwell Banker here, Sherry Chris, who you know has been a huge supporter with Better Homes and Gardens. If you've ever been to a Nagel Rep conference, you know Sherry Chris. She can't be here this week, but Jen Marchetti, the CMO of Better Homes and Gardens, is doing a great marketing session later in the week. We're really proud of that. And from Caldwell Banker, Lauren, forgive me, I'm going to do it. We have Lauren, oh, help me. Mulathar, thank you. We have Lauren, we've got Craig, who you know well. Craig, do you know, Craig, um, who's the VP of Luxury for Caldwell Banker um, and one of the biggest users of the F-bomb in our company, was, <laughs> was be, besides that, was just um, named by Crane's Business of Chicago um, as one of the most notable LGBT executives um, in the country in real estate. And we have a bunch of our agents who are here as well that are, that are leading or participating in panels. We've got Patrick Martin from Sotheby's. We've got Herman Chan from Sotheby's. Um, Lucio from Caldwell Banker are all here. And so we at Realogy and our brands are, are all in in supporting Nagel Rep um, because it's so important to you and it's so important to, to all of us. So as, as you saw earlier, Tanya received the Pinnacle Award. It was literally... Um, killing her that she couldn't be here to accept it. I told Jeff that she called me two weeks ago and she had, um, she had her, her voice on her sort of, um, you know, Mr. President, I've accidentally launched the ICBMs on Moscow voice on. And she said, I've done a terrible thing. And I said, what have you done? She said, I mixed up my calendar and I'm supposed to accept a award at Nagel Rep and be at my husband's most important business meeting at the same time. What should I do? Um, and I think we learned from all the presentations this morning, I said, you need to be with your family, and that's why you saw her on, on video. But um, Tanya is the single most driving voice for equality and inclusion um, within our company um, across the board, and I think Realogy is a better company because of Tanya, and wanted to just acknowledge her for that. Um, and I'll wrap up. wrap up with just sharing some news. Um, you know, two pieces of news that I, that I wanted to share that are super relevant, not only to this group, but super relevant to the country um, and super important for Realogy. Uh, the first is starting in 2019, we have amended all of our employee benefit plans, whether they're, they're health, insurance, marriage status, to, rec to recognize transgender individuals in all of our benefit plans. That takes place in 2019. <laughs> And that's amazing. Like I said, I've worked for large public companies for a long time, and sometimes it takes big companies like that that are complex a little bit longer, but we're there and we're proud of that. But more importantly, um, you haven't seen it yet. I'm telling you first, um, later today, Realogy is gonna put out um, a press release, and all of our brands will really magnify it and talk the hell out of it um, on all of our social channels. But on behalf of our 185,000 agents, on behalf of our seven brands, we're announcing our support for HR 1447 today. That's one of the proudest things that we as a company have done. That, you know, that comes from the very top, from, from our CEO and the leadership team. You all know that if the resolution is passed, 
will add sexual orientation to the list of things that you cannot discriminate against when you're buying or selling a house. The video, Jeff, that you showed was so compelling. Um, you're the first to hear about it, and we're really excited. You'll see it across all of our brand's social channels today and in the, in the week that follows. So I just want to wrap up by saying thanks. Thanks for welcoming all of us at Realogy here this week. Um, we strive to be a leader in all aspects of the real estate industry, um, engaging, engaging with, with everyone in the industry and being an advocate for, for what is right. And that's why we're here today. That's why we support the resolution, because every homeowner um, should have access to housing without discrimination. There's nothing, there's nothing more important than that. So um, thank you so fucking much for letting me be here today. <laughs> have a great conference. Thank you. John Payton, give me a huge round of applause. Oh my God, he was cute as a goddamn button, right?